Welcome back, fellow explorers and historians, to our study of the history of colonial and revolutionary New York. As mentioned before, we're going to take some time to study the Native Americans and their lives um, because it's important for us to honor those who lived in New York State before it was colonized. And it also helps us to understand what led up to the colonization of New York by the Europeans. So today's teaching point is historians examine the life of the Native Americans who lived in New York. As always, you're going to need your notebook, your pencil, and an investigating hat. So you can take this time now to pause the video, to gather your materials, and to copy down your teaching point. Our goal of today's lesson is to compare and contrast the life of different Native American tribes. So the two most notable tribes were the Iroquois and the Algonquin. When we take a look at this map, you're going to see that New York State is divided into two different colors, the purple section and the red-orange section. The purple section was a part of the Iroquois nation's territory and the red-orange section was a part of the Algonquin territory. And if you see these names and these white divides, these were part of the tribes. So these were the different tribes of the Iroquois. And the white part showed um, the divide in the territories. Same thing with the red-orange section, the Algonquin Territory. These were the tribes that belonged to the Algonquin um, tribes. Alright, so we know that the Iroquois and the Algonquin tribes shared many similarities, but there were also many differences. So the Iroquois was made up of ten different tribes, and six of them came together to form what is known as the Iroquois Confederacy, and is also called the Iroquois Nation. Now, in contrast, the Algonquin were made up of 22 different tribes, and none of those tribes ever came together to form a large nation. Now, the Iroquois and the Algonquin were considered to be each other's enemies. And we're going to talk about one similarity that both tribes had, and it was that they relied primarily on agriculture, which means farming, and hunting. They also believed that women were responsible for farming and harvesting the crops. Meanwhile, men were responsible for hunting and fishing. So the three crops that the Iroquois and the Algonquin um, relied on were squash, beans, and corn, and they were known as the three sister crops. And this was because these three crops were always grown together. Now we're going to talk about a difference. So one difference, what was different? Um, one one difference that they had was how they lived and where they lived. So the Iroquois lived in long houses, and these long houses were shared by different families. Often these family there were about four to five different families living in the in these long houses, and they considered each long house to be a clan or a larger family, and these long houses were permanent. And so this was because the Iroquois believed that men should travel and hunt. So they did not take their women and children when they went hunting. Oftentimes, a hunting trip would last for months, and they preferred their women and children to be within the village. The Algonquin, in contrast, lived in houses called wigwams. 
And these houses were smaller in comparison to the longhouses and usually only held about one family. Now, the reason why they chose to live in smaller temporary houses was because they traveled with their family, with their families. So if men went on a hunting trip, the women also went with them along with their children. And they built wigwams because they were easier to take apart and they were easier um, to put together than the longhouses. So that's one similarity and one difference that the Iroquois and the Algonquin had. And of course, it is investigation time. It's your turn. You're going to read the article or chapter two entitled Society and Spirituality. You can find this on Get Epic. I will also try to upload this as a document. But you're going to take a look at um, the differences and similarities that the Iroquois and Algonquin had in regards to spirituality and their society. Of course, you're going to study the artifacts or the text features and make a connection. And always, as always, answer the question that will be written um, or that will be posted. All right, guys, make sure you use evidence from the text and make sure that your responses are um, that your responses are written in a Google Doc for me to check. All right, I'll see you guys next time.